Hello everybody, Steve 3 again, and today I will be doing a tier list on all the cards in Casey's mod, alongside also all the cards in general, just to have everything in one place, you know. But I'm gonna start with Casey's mod, so if you're only interested in that, you can just, you know, see the timestamps below and just go, okay, well, Casey's mod is up to this point, I don't care about in the rest of this. I will try to just say a few things for each card, because I know that I'm really explanatory and really analytical about a bunch of things, so I will try to keep it short because otherwise with so many cards I think this is gonna be like a one hour video plus and I would like to keep it below 3D if possible. So let's begin. Uh, the, the rankings, first of all, uh, this ranking is just a placeholder ranking, doesn't really matter. So, from the bottom up, trash. Trash means the card is trash. Not really mm, that much to explain here. Uh, obviously, it does, mean, it does not mean that the card is completely useless, it's unplayable. It also doesn't mean that the card is, uh, you take it and you lose the run. No, it, it just means that, in my eyes, the card is really bad and anything can be better than it. Uh, now, the word trash specifically is something I really use in my runs, that's why I'm using it here. Uh, once again, do not get offended if your most liked card is here because um, other cards are better than it. So, C needs a specific deck, I mean, it is literally what it says. Now, why this isn't C here, I don't know, just to have letters in the tier list, I guess. But uh, yeah, if, if, if it's not in the specific deck that it needs to be, then it's trash. It's as simple as that. It's either here or downwards. Good sigils, those are cards that most of the time will be maybe not complete trash or maybe need a specific deck, but uh, they they sometimes get picked just for the sigil. So if you know that you have time to sacrifice them or if they're early in the run, you can just take them or if you have good cards to combo them with. Not complete trash is, you know, what it says. So they are usable cards. Useful are cards in general that you should pick up whenever you see them. They are cards that will uh, help you win the game either because they have good sigils or or anything else an easy win is you just take them and you run with them and you just try to either big build, build a deck around them or just you know flame them buff them anything so let's begin uh the the egg the egg the egg is going to go with needs a specific deck and guess what the reason for that is that you can only have it in the specific deck and you have to create a deck around it. Obviously, otherwise it would be complete trash, but I mean, there isn't really that much to explain here. In case you don't know, this thing evolves into a 1-5 that attacks five times so it does five damage right away the moment you play it and it only costs one bone but for you to have this evolve actually you have to have units that have one life up to five life so you have to have a one life unit a two life unit a three four five life unit then the same thing has to go with damage you have to have a one damage unit a two damage unit etc etc up to five and then you also have to have every single one of the five tribes and when you have that all fulfilled and have made your whole deck be a trash deck then this card is a turn one win. Wow. <laughs> so let's continue. Horag. I think it's not complete trash. The reason I'm saying this, uh, the, th the reason it's not really high here is because it uh, it's pretty much in Roboros, but only when it kills something, it gets plus one damage. That's what this thing does. It's, uh, it's very simple. And uh, I don't think it really does something extremely well. It's a rare card. That means you should have it after the first boss if you're lucky enough. If it's after your second boss, you might not even, sh you maybe shouldn't even pick it up. And if it's after the third boss, just not take it. That's why it's not complete trash because you have to find it early and you also have to use it to kill some units. And then what is it going to be? It's going to be like a 2 cost 5-5, five, five, a 2 cost 6-5. It's going to be powerful. Don't get me wrong. Like you can put double strike on it or something and just win games for free. You can put triple strike on this. Like it's it's a really good receptor of sigils. So that's why it's not complete trash, but I would not say it's useful because you can find better things than this. Uh, Ijirak, I would say is useful. Uh, back in the day, I said that it needs a specific deck, but uh, after thinking about this, I'm putting it on useful for the sole reason that Anything that is worse than Ijirak should be below it. It's as simple as that. Because what Ijirak does is it, it transforms into, into, in case you don't know, by the way, I will be explaining all these cards and then we're going to be rushing through the rest. So Ijirak uh, transforms, not transforms, uh, imitates and looks like any other card in your deck. And uh, you don't know when this card is in your hand and when you're about to play it. But the moment you play it, it becomes this 4-1 um, a repulsive. Repulsive means that nothing can attack it, so it's pretty much a model. It can only die against either a boss mechanic or poison. Uh, not poisons, what? Uh, spikes. Only against spikes it can die. And you cannot flame it because you cannot use it at events, you cannot sacrifice it. Like, this card is not possible to change the stats at all. It's always a 4-1 a repulsive. So it just dies to spikes. And, um, yeah, I mean, if... Uh, a simple question. Would you enjoy an Iraq 
or an ant. Would you enjoy an easy rack or uh, this or this or this or this or this? You know, if I'm gonna sh showcase like a random card, for example, this thing. Do you prefer an easy rack or a grizzly? Do you prefer an easy rack or an opossum? Do you prefer an easy rack or a bullfrog? You know, if I go and show it into any single card, as long as your rack is better than it, it should be above it in the tier list. And in my opinion, most of the cards are below easy rack in power level. Specifically, the only time easy rack is not good is if your card can do more than four damage in a lane so if it has and if it has some kind of weird effect that you need to get uh, use for example the cuckoo event like or, or if you want for example the black code you need a triple sacrifice and boom it's in his rock so you know in the in these specific circumstances it's not good but otherwise it's like insane so is your rock insane next raccoon this uh, cost is wrong. The card now costs one blood, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty needs a specific deck, most likely trash actually. It's like a one cost one one. This sigil, what it does is that whenever you kill an opponent card, you actually gain a bone. So not only your card's dying gives you bones, but also opponent card's dying gives you bones. One again, once again, this is a one cost one one, and uh, it's it's supposed to be for bone decks. But uh, you need to play cards to kill opponent cards, and when exactly is gonna when exactly do you think you're gonna play the bone units like? It 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 is it doesn't do anything extremely well to have a one one um, stat line. It should be like a one three, maybe one two, but I I would say it should be one three like a buffer thing. You know, it, it needs to survive to work, and in general, the stat line makes it so bad. Otherwise, it would be a bit higher. I I don't understand why it has one life, by the way. Uh, I think because it was a three bone cost, and they just wanted to maintain the stat line while also changing the stats. But it, it's like a really bad card. Um, turtle. I would say trash. You could say good sigils, but I, I, I really would say trash. It's like a two cost two two that just survives a hit. Obviously, it's very mediocre. It's not the worst card in the universe. There are worse than this, but uh, it definitely does not need a specific deck. Like that's not a thing. It's also not complete trash. Like maybe, maybe not complete trash. For, yeah, maybe not complete trash. You know, yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. As a word, like the word literally explains what this card is, in my opinion. Now you might say Sift is the turtle next to the Horak. Are you serious? Yeah, I am serious. Like the Horak is a two cost one five. Just think about this. Uh, yeah, let's continue. So, no, why would I go there? So red heart, trash. No questions asked. This thing has as many sacrifices you do, that much damage. So the moment you play it, it should ha have either two damage because it already is a two sacrifice unit, or it can have three damage, maybe sometimes four damage, but most of the time it's going to have three damage. And it, I mean, honestly speaking, if this has four damage, you're winning anyway because you already have like sacrifice to other things and alongside this so in general it will have some attack in one turn but the thing is that the next turn it's not gonna have anything like it will reset to zero damage it always resets every turn that's the bad part with it the really bad part with this thing is that you either have to do a bunch of sacrifice in the same turn which most of the time if you do like three or four sacrifices that means you play three or four cards that means you win um or, or if you just play this on its own it's gonna be a two two and the next turn it's gonna be nothing and zero two and it's also gonna be moving around really bad card tadpole I would say not complete trash, if if useful, but I would say not complete trash. Maybe there is missing like a tier list here. <laughs> uh, there, there is missing like a level. So actually, Tadpole is useful. No, Tadpole is useful. It's a zero cost. You can put sigils on it. It's going to evolve into, um, into a frog. But the thing is that you can also transfer these sigils off to something else. And these sigils are pretty decent. Like underwater in general is not really that good if you don't have damage on your unit. But because it also gives alongside evolution, it, it's pretty much as if it gives one damage to something, right? Because if, for example, you evolve this thing, it's going to become a 2-3 underwater, which is pretty decent. A 1 cost 2-3 underwater is pretty decent the same goes with anything by the way like even the cat being a one two zero one and one cost zero one it's going to become a one cost one two one three underwater so in general like it's a it's a useful card to have in the deck because it's free and also because the sigils are good uh great kraken i would say not complete trash you could put it here in a need specific deck but no uh, this you can only gain this if you start with the underwater deck and this evolves into one of the three tentacle hands cards uh, the one, this thing, the, the attack card, which is 50 mm, 50 if it's gonna be good or not. Then it has the mirror card, which is extremely bad. And then it also has the, where's the last one? Okay, I don't find the last one. But uh, here, this, the, the ding, the ding tentacle, which is the best one because it's a 4 3 pretty much. So you play this in the first spot, it does one damage first turn, and then second turn, you hope it becomes a 4 3. If you're not lucky enough, it might become a 3 1, which is also playable. And then if you're really unlucky, it will become this thing. So just because of the fact that this thing exists, it, it goes to not complete trash but i mean it's a combination because this thing exists it's not in complete it's not in trash but because this thing exists it's not in useful <laughs> as simple as that so we go with wolverine the wolverine does 
uh, this thing, the what the Hodak does, which is plus one damage on kill, but it's per tem temporary and it also costs five bones. In my opinion, it costs too much to be useful and the effect is very slow. Now, a few people say that you could transfer this thing onto Mantis God and make it gain damage while killing things. Yeah, the sigil might be useful, but it's not really in the good territory. When I say good sigils, I mean really good sigils. I would never ever pick a Wolverine and say, oh, I can put the damage sigil on a Mantis God. No, no, no. The, 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 the sigil is not worth it to be. Uh, it's not really that good. I know you can clear opponents and get like a, within one turn, you, your Mantis God can get three kills and be like, it's a one attack, it's a two attack, it's a three attack, and then it's a four one. But still, just because one or two cards combo with it as well does not mean it's a good card. Wild Bull. I would say not complete trash, just because it's a two cost three two. I think there is nothing more to say about this. If anything, uh, the, the throwaway sigil is really bad. In case you don't know what the sigil does, it's uh, let's say you play the Wild Bull over here. I'm literally going to showcase how this sigil works. I, I attack and it does this. Literally, it swaps around the cards. And then next turn I attack, next turn it does this. Next turn it does this. Like, th that's how the sigil works. It's, it's as simple as that. Now, some people enjoy it. I don't really enjoy it. But still, it's a 2 cost 3-2, so it's not complete trash. Uh, definitely not fits in the other two character categories, though. Uh, next. Dark Wolf Pup. Useful, I would say, for sure. This thing is a 2 cost. That evolves into this. 3 cost. This here, uh, we're gonna talk about this in a moment. But, uh, yeah. It's a 2 cost 1-1, one, one, which is not really insanely good, but I mean, it's a 2 cost 1-1, one, one, so at least it will do 1 damage. You hope it doesn't die, and when you say when I say you hope, I mean you literally play it somewhere where it's not going to die next turn, because you can see what Lesh is going to play, and then it's going to become a 2-5 double strike, which is insane. So this is like a 2 cost 2-5 two, double strike, that's how you should look at it, and it also gives you like 1 bone for free. I guess that's a little bit of a flare, but uh, I don't know why the same flare does not exist in any other canine, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Next. Dire Wolf, good sigils. That's as simple as it goes. Uh, otherwise, it's like in its specific deck because you need to have a three cost. But in general, three costs go into needs a specific deck because without the proper handling of the three cost, you will not be able to really play them. So this specifically is also has like an insane sigil. So that's why it's here. Uh, as simple as that. It's it's it could also be at not complete trash. But honestly speaking, if it's not in good sigils, then it goes to needs a specific deck. So it's as simple as that. Next, we go with Cuckoo. Obviously, it has insane sigils, but it's gonna go with easy win, <laughs> for sure. This thing uh, is, you put an egg in front of it when you play it. Like, uh, imagine the egg being like this, literally. Uh, so, yeah, I can even, you know, showcase how this works. So, let's say the Cuckoo is in my hand, and I play it here, boom. This thing happens. That, that's what it is. It's uh, as, as simple as that. And then, Leshy cannot play anything in front of it. And um, yeah, you do one damage in the area of return. Obviously, the one damage is not going to always be one damage. If you have triple strike on it, it's going to be protected from all opponents because it has an egg in front of it and it's going to do a triple strike and do three damage per turn. If you make this immortal and play it and sacrifice it, play it and sacrifice it a few times, you know, you can fill the whole void with eggs and then unless you can't do anything. Now, the eggs have a downside of a chance to be a raven egg. And because the Raven Egg is played on your turn, the moment Leshy plays it instantly evolves into a Raven, so you take like a 2 damage hit. But even then, you have a 1-1 one, one, and he has a 2-3 two, two, Flyers, so you do 1 and take 2 damage. But if you have any Sigil whatsoever on this, any Flame whatsoever on this, anything whatsoever that makes this thing a smidge better, you instantly win. This is like a, this is like a build around card. If this is your only 1 cost in your deck, you just win every single fight because you can just block in the worst uh, enemies that try to join. And yeah, in general, this is like a free win card in my opinion. Next card, Mealworm. I would say not complete trash. Uh, this is a 2 cost 0 2. It has this uh, Eat Sigil. I don't know how exactly it's called. But what it does is when a unit uses this as a sacrifice fodder. So if I play the Cuckoo on top of the Mealworm, then the stats of this gets transferred. Now you could also flame this into damage. So it becomes like a 2 2 and then it transfers 2 2 on the next unit, which is really good. So, and this also could be like a flame tester. So if you want to, for example, double flame something and don't know what, you can double flame this. And no matter if it burns out of the deck, then so be it. But if it stays in the deck, you, you have a way of transferring a good buff to most of the units. In general, I think this is a good card. Also, it could be in good sigils, by the way, but uh, the card in general is also good. The reason it could be in good sigils is because if you transfer this thing on, a, on something that already has immortality, like like, um, I don't know, an Ouroboros, then you can transfer Ouroboros stats to the next unit. Like, make uh, make a Mantis God into a 20-20, then, then play the Ouroboros again, and then transfer it the 21-21 onto, I don't know, the, the, the D-Wolf. Like, it's insane. You, you can use the Sigil for sure uh, on some specific cards, that is, that have good stats. Next, Lammergeier. I would say needs a specific deck, because you need to be able to get a bunch of bones. What this card does is it has 
as many bones as you have and damage rounded downwards. So if you have 20 bones, it has 10 attack, but you're not going to have 20 bones. If you have five bones, it's going to have two attack. So a three cost, two, four flying. I mean, it's not really good. But the thing is that if you have a few bones, then this can get insane. If you already start with bones because you have sacrificed a goat or something uh, on the bone lord, then it's going to be even more insane. So you understand that th this really needs a deck. It's literally what it says. I, I would otherwise say it's trash. It's, uh, yeah, otherwise I would say it's trash. I, I don't really enjoy this card. I know that you can actually win with this really easily if you have 10 or 20 or 30 bones, but still, if you're not going to have those, then it's not a good card, so it's in that specific deck. Next card, Pelt Lice. I would say good sigils. This isn't the old Pelt Lice. I'm sorry for that, but this is the tier list I found that is the most updated, I guess. The others don't even have the Great Kraken in it. So, yeah, let's continue. The Pelt Lice is normally a double strike unit that's the only difference they made so it's it's normally it normally has the double strike now this would also be needs a specific deck but i'm gonna upgrade it to good sigils um because of the reason that you know this thing needs a specific deck to work but the thing is that double strike is such a good sigil that you actually want sometimes to just pick up the pelt lies to transfer it and because that wolf might never come up to your run you, you might not find a dire wolf while in the meantime pelt lies might appear in a boss fight and sometimes boss fights gives you like really bad cards so sometimes you just want to take the pelt lies and try to transfer the double strike now uh, the pelt lies itself if you don't want to transfer it uh, what it does is it joins the match so it gets into the board onto the board for free if you play a pelt, any of the pelts, by the way, the wolf pelt, the rabbit pelt, the golden pelt, doesn't matter. The moment you play a pelt, this thing joins for free from the side, from the board, not from your hand, from the deck and from your hand, by the way, and just joins the match and just starts attacking. So it has a really good mechanic and also it disables your shops completely. You can buy more pelts, but you cannot uh, trade the pelts for cards at all. You are forced to keep the pelts in the deck. That's actually good because you, if you have a pelt lice deck, you don't want the the pelts to randomly just get uh, removed from your deck because the game decided to put a shop in front of you. So, in general, the card is uh, maybe not complete trash, but it needs a deck, no. It needs specifically a deck. So it's gonna stick to good sigils, which is better than needs a deck, by the way, in case you do not understand that. So, yeah, there's that. Otherwise, it's a decent card. Like, in the specific deck, if you have the deck, you can put, like, flames on it, you can put mantis strikes on it, and then it just joins from them. You play a pelt, this joins, boom, instantly win. And if you pet, like, if you put fecundity on it, or if you, fecundity, maybe not, if you put immortality on it or something else, you can just play it more times. If you copy it on the copy event, you can have this, like, two or three of them join the match right away, so you can do some crazy combos. So, yeah, there's that. And last but not least, maybe not least, actually, we're gonna go with rabbit. I mean, it's trash. <laughs> maybe needs a specific Specific deck. I mean, it's a zero cost zero one. What can I say? It's like the Gek, but I guess Gek would be at useful. Well, if Gek is at useful, I guess Rabbit is at not complete trash. Uh, the, the only reason for that, actually, there is not an only reason. It's twofold. First of all, it's a zero cost. That means you can put, like, sigils on it and can really quickly power up. You can also use it for flame. You know, if it becomes, if it gets one or two damage, then it's actually a zero cost two damage unit. And uh, in general, like, you can use this. It's it's not like complete trash. Because it costs zero, you can play... Like, if it's in your starting hand, you can play a two cost right away. It has its upsides, but just by the sole reason that it's no, no cost. If Imagine this immortal, imagine this whatever. And it's also a good meme card. Like, you can try to do a run with the, the, the this thing and win. And yeah, that's with the Casey's mod card. So let's remove this row. And uh, let's begin everything. So I hope you guys who are here for the Casey's mod specifically cards... If you enjoyed the video, then just drop a like, helps out immensely, and uh, I'm gonna continue now with the rest of this, and I'm gonna be a bit faster on the rest of this, as I have done um, a bunch of tier lists on this again and again and again. So, Adder. Trash. I mean, it's, it's it just has poisonous. It it you, you throw it in the flame, it's a 2 cost 1-1. One, one. Even if it kills a unit that's strong, it still will only be doing 1 damage per turn to Leshy, so in general it's really bad. Like it, the, the stats are too bad for the Sigil. Now, if you like the Sigil or not, doesn't matter. The unit is still trash. The, unit, the Sigil is definitely not one of the good units, specifically because half the boss fights don't care about this, and the boss fights that do care about this are immune to poisonous in Casey's mod, so it, it, it doesn't even matter at all. The only boss fight that this is good at is... The, the first phase and the second phase of the new pirate boss, as it has like a bunch of mole man, otherwise it, it isn't good at all. Alpha, this is a 4 cost normally, and uh, I would say it has a good sigil. Uh, I mean, that's it pretty much. It is trash, but uh, no, it's actually not trash. It's it's not complete trash, but I, I would say it's it's somewhere between. I don't think it's like a really good card. In general, bone card. Bo this costs 4, by the way. It doesn't cost 5 in case mod. In general, bone cost cards are decent, but the thing is you have to 
I mean, you're wasting like a few turns to play them. And the thing is, in my opinion, the best way you can play this game, Inscription in general, is by playing really quickly a bunch of power. And Alpha does not provide that because you have to play some things to have bones to play it. But the sigil is decent. Like, you can put the sigil on a bunch of things and make broken stuff. So, yeah, the sigil is good. By the way, things that aren't trash can obviously also become broken, right? It doesn't matter if, uh, like, uh, you're gonna see in a moment. Let's uh, let's continue. Maybe this should not be needs specific deck, and it should be needs specifics needs setup needs setup needs setup. I would say needs setup. I think that's more fair. You know, I think that's more fair. Needs setup. So because I'm thinking about some things here coming on. Uh, next amalgam. It's not complete trash. It's a two cost three three. It's it's just better than the wild ball. So it's it's as simple as that. Amoeba. Um, and it also has all sigils, but that doesn't matter. Amoeba, I would say we're gonna say not complete trash. The reason for that is it's a two cost one two. It's really easy to play. That's the reason. If something is easy to play, specifically one two costs, it's good. And I mean, it's it's a one two. And it can also gain a random sigil that might be insane and might not be insane. But if it's not insane, you just sacrifice to play something else. As the mealworm is good, uh, Amoeba is also that good pretty much and the sigil is irrelevant like it's if it was a two cost one two with no st and nothing else like not sigil nothing it will still be decent it still would be at not complete trash work rant need setup and green need setup that trash it's a four cost two one i mean the stats are decent uh, it's not complete trash actually no it's a four cost two one yeah uh, it's not complete trash as simple as that it's um it, it does its job it's it's a bone unit that will bring two damage on the table for free pretty much because you will play it in general i don't like bone units but it's not like it's complete trash beaver needs setup for sure it would be here but i literally changed this uh, naming here by the way for the beaver <laughs> because i saw him uh the reason needs setup is here on beaver specifically is because they, ch they buffed it in uh, casey's mod and now the the woods i don't know what these are called the logs that appear the dams that appear are uh, do get the sigils that the beaver has tacked on it so that means if you put, uh, I don't know, if you put the Great Kraken on the beaver, wow, that's a good idea. I never thought about this. If you put the Great Kraken on the beaver, then the beaver goes underwater next turn and the dams also, but the next turn, all of them emerge into three random tentacles. Wait a minute, that, that could be like a video I could do. Hmm, please don't steal it. Yeah, Exo, Exo the Gamer, if you watch this, please don't steal my idea, please. Like, may, may, please. A anybody that's in the description, uh, <laughs> or, 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 if you want to steal my idea, you will comment down below in this video, yo, I'm gonna steal this idea. And then in the video, you're gonna steal it. You're gonna say, this is an idea Sif talked about, okay? If you do this, then I'm okay with it. You can steal it. But I'm gonna try to do this video too. So anyway, let's continue. <laughs> I'm okay with cross-promoting each other. I'm not okay with stealing from each other. Anyway, let's continue. So, Beehive. Need specific? No, it's, 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 it's a good sigil. It's, um, it's a good sigil because you can transfer it to some things and get some good combos going. I mean, otherwise, it, it isn't really that good. It definitely is not a good setup. It's not better than these cards, and it's also most likely trash territory. But the reason it's in a good sigil here is because the bee also got buffed. By the way, uh, beaver examples for good sigils on it would be items. Like, if it gives items, this the pack rat sigil would be good. Uh, also, the good this here, alpha sigil would be good because the alpha sigil makes it so that both of the dams buff the beaver. So the beaver is a 2-3, uh, a 3-3 three, three from both of the buffs. And both of the dams also get buffed from the beaver. So the dams are a 1-1 one, one, one each. So you have like a 5 damage unit. So in general, this gets good sigils. Now, beehive. This thing also got the buff of whatever sigil the card already has gets transferred onto it. But the thing is that the card itself is not really something insane. It's just the one cost zero two that doesn't do anything and gives you bees. So I would say good sigil because you can do some combos with the sigil itself. Now, good sigil does not mean that you should transfer it. Sometimes it means that it can also get some sigils on it and become a good card. So that's why I have it here. Otherwise, I would say it's trash. Um, but um, it's, it's a bit finicky. It's a bit finicky. The thing is that if you transfer this to something else, for example, if you transfer this onto the mealworm, then the bees will not have the me mealworm sigil on it because the bees only get the sigils that are tacked on they have to be like a little stamp but if you transfer the mealworm on the bee worm beehive then the bees will have the mealworm sigil so yeah i mean it's it, it it's that i i don't know I, I, this is like really in between here so you you can decide i i still don't believe like that it's like a 50 it depends depends it really depends on the deck I would say trash is uh, is more uh, is more okay with uh, let's, let's go with this because you as I said the sigil itself is useful you can use it in a good way. This is a useful card. 
It's a two cost for three. Like it doesn't go better with stats. If I'm gonna choose one card that I will choose that I if you told me choose one card that has the best stat ratio in the game, it's this one. It's a two cost for three. You can't go better than this. Obviously, Roboros can go better than this, but otherwise, like it's a two cost for three. There isn't really that much more to explain. It's from the stat cards, it's the best card. I would say Jirak is the only thing that beats it. And um, yeah, I mean, stats for money, by the way, stat value-wise, the best card. That's why I would say useful. Black, Black Goat. Yeah, good sigils. It isn't anything else other than the sigil. It's, 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 it's a useless card. It's only the sigil. Without the sigil, it isn't anything. So, could have even been a neat setup, but the thing is that it doesn't really need setup. You just take it for the sigil, and uh, that's it. Uh, Bloodhound. It's trash. <laughs> uh, it's complete trash. We know what this does. It's just try to YOLO block and die. Same goes with Bullfrog. I mean, Bullfrog is the master of trash. Like, this is the this is the, the go-to high trash card. This is, this is the bull... It's the Bullfrog. Next card, this thing. Not complete trash. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's a 1 cost 2 1 at the starting attack. With 1 or 2 good sigils, it's instantly become insane. If, if, if you just let it alive for one turn, it becomes a 3-1. Next turn, it becomes a 4-1. If you use some items that give you cards in hand, you can instantly use it as a 5-1 or a 4-1. You know, if you have some side cards that you will draw anyway, might as well draw them one turn earlier and just win the fight, you know. This card, you can literally play this card, and if you have a squirrel in the bottle, draw the squirrel. Don't use it. It does 3 damage turn 1, and then next turn, draw a squirrel from the deck, and it does 4 damage. And 3 plus 4 is 7, so 7 damage is most likely death for Leshy. So, yeah, in general, you can do some things with this that's good. Cat, just good sigil. In my opinion, cat is here, by the way. I, I really don't like the cat for the sole reason that the cat itself is a zero to one and you cannot sacrifice you cannot kill it you don't have a hammer to remove it from your board so i don't enjoy the cat being on the board for the rest of the fight but it is what it is i mean it's it has a good sigil uh the child 13 though is not complete trash it's better than just a good sigil because this thing evolves into a 2-1 when you sacrifice it then if you sacrifice it again it becomes again a zero one but at least being a 2-1 for a while and also flyer is really decent in my opinion definitely better than the cat that just is a zero one and blocks a lane forever uh, cockroach obviously this is useful uh, not only for the fact that you can sacrifice it to something else like it should be in good sigils of course but it's useful in general because in, in general whatever isn't useful if you find it you pick it that's what useful means okay so uh, cockroach is in that category even even if you don't have a bone deck you might play it and get a free sacrifice out of it like in general you would like to sacrifice on something else you might say, Yosef, if it's only about sacrificing, it should be in good sigils. Yes, but not ex <laughs> Yeah, I think it should. Yeah, let's keep the rules here um, simple. Yeah, Cockroach should be here. Otherwise, I wouldn't go on with useful, by the way. Uh, Corpse Maggots. It's just a good sigil, honestly. But the thing is, that's not true. This card is also playable in the deck. Yeah, th this card is actually playable without transferring the sigils, without doing anything. Uh, you can just play it in your deck and even keep it forever there, as it's pretty much a free unit that's gonna join the fight. So this isn't useful for sure. Yeah, Corpse Maggots is definitely useful. Cockroach, you might say, I don't really need the sacrifice, I only need it for the sigil. But uh, uh, Corpse Maggots is not the same, because Corpse Maggots will join for free, so it is at least a free unit on its own without any change whatsoever on it. So this is a useful card. Coyote, I would say, goes to not complete trash alongside the bat, because... Um, you know, it's uh, it's it's a four cost two one. I mean, I still don't like bone decks, but I I have to mention that. I mean, four, four bones is not really that hard to get, and two damage in general is decent. Dius, I would say needs setup for sure. Dius uh, still I would put it on trash, but they buffed it once again in Casey's mod, and they made the bells also get the sigils that this thing has. If 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 the Dios sigil could get transferred something else and still work. Like, if I could transfer the Dios sigil onto the Amalgam and make it work, then it would be here. But because that's not true, it's a neat setup. Um, because you have to put specific good sigils on the Dios that only work on the Dios. Uh, that are good for this, actually, not only work with the Dios. Good sigils for this specifically is, like, the Bullfrog, this thing, like, Air Blocker. Uh, Immortality is also decent. Because you can play the bells again and again and again and make sure that the Dios just assassinates everything. But otherwise, like, I don't know. It's not really that much of a crazy card. Elkfawn, I would say not complete trash because it's a one cost one one that evolves into one into this thing. Which this thing is complete trash. But the reason it's complete trash is because it costs two and moves around. If this costed one, it would be here. <laughs> so because it takes a turn to evolve, this is here. Actually, a one cost two four would be here, honestly speaking. But yeah, this is like trash because it's a two cost two four defensive unit. Also moves around. Like who cares? Field mice, good sigil. By the way, this is a uh, nerfed in, in inscription in Casey's mod. This actually only works once. 
you can only get one copy of the card you use the fecundity on but still it's a good sigil we let's be honest here flying ant needs setup let's put it here in the ant setup jack is obviously a useful card it's a no cost one one pretty decent and powerful a random card i guess i would say trash i, I don't need to explain random card uh gold pelt is trash and actually let's let's throw the like all the pelts away here it, it doesn't matter uh, if you want to go into the whole argument of, yeah, but you can use them to buy things, um, I mean, the card itself is trash. You draw it, you don't want it in your hand. It, it's it's bad. You, it might save you, but I don't need to explain the Peltsman. Uh, Great White, need setup. Grizzly, need setup. Everything that costs three and more needs setup. Uh, Kingfisher, trash. Let's be honest here. Actually, let's put it like here. Uh, Kingfisher is trash because of the reason that it's a one cost one one. You have to put like flame on it to make it good. The sigil itself. I mean, flying in underwater. I have done an underwater run, okay? And the run went pretty well. But the Kingfisher is still trash. Like, it needs too much setup. The sigils are not one of the best ones. The, uh, you can obviously put the sigil on something like the Amalgam and have a 3-3 three, three flyer of attacking, but but still, I mean, uh, nah. It's not a good card. Like, no. Magpie, obviously useful. Uh, actually, easy win, I would say. The reason Magpie is an easy win is because the moment you play the Magpie, you draw your best card from the deck. It's as simple as that. So, if... Magpie is the best card in your deck. Okay, you you should think like this. And if if not the best card, then it's the second best card because you have your best card already in your, in your hand or in, on the board. Or if not the second, then the third because you have the second best already on the board. You, you understand what I mean? Like the Magpie is, it just draws you the best card that is currently in the deck, and you just sacrifice it for that card. It's as simple as that. So Magpie is like, it's an easy win, man, because you should have at least one insane card in your deck. In this game, you should always have one card in your deck that is literally, if I draw this, I win. That's how you should play the game. So Magpie is an easy win if you are following the simple rule of having a win card. Uh, Man's God, it's an easy win. You just transfer it on something or you just buff it a million times and you win. It's, it's just one of the best cards in the game. As simple as that. And uh, yeah, especially if you go for the abuse mechanic of the one costs. Mantis, useful. It's half a Mantis God. Nothing that much to explain. People know these things. Trash, because it copies whatever the opponent has. And after the copying stops, it's a 0 3. Zero threes don't do damage to Leshy. And the thing is that because it does not copy the backline unit of Leshy, it, uh, for example, now it would be 4 3. It would hit for 4th of Grizzly and then die. Now it would just be a 0-3 and then the Grizzly comes in and it kills it. So in general, not a good card. And also, I mean, if something has insane attack, it will come in and kill it. As simple as that. Mole Man. It's useful. Not complete trash. Not complete trash, I would say. And un uh, in general, useful needs damage. Not complete trash here because, you know, it buys you time. And you should always, always sacrifice the Mole Man, by the way. Uh, if, if, if it buys its time and, like, takes two or three hits, when it has one or two life, you should sacrifice it for something. That's how you should play the Mole Man. You should always use it to block some hits and then expedite your uh, your turn damage. So don't don't let the Mole Mains die on their own. Always sacrifice them for something greater. That's my opinion. Let's continue. Mole. Uh, Mole is trash, in my opinion. It's it's too small and doesn't even block flyers. So it's not really that good. Moosebuck. Obviously, it's a setup. As always, Possum, I would say not complete trash. It's a 2 cost 1-1. One, one. I mean, yeah, it's a 2 cost 1-1. One, one. You can easily play it and use it as sacrifice fodder. Yeah, that's it. Ouroboros, easy win. You, you draw it, you buff it, you win. Backtrack. Pack rat, not complete trash. I hate the card, but it's not complete trash. It gives you a card at random, uh, the, uh, an item at random, and we know how broken some items are. So if you play the packer and get the clockety clock or a snip snip, you win. So it's not complete trash. I would put it in trash just for the meme purpose. You know what? Here, memes. Who, who, memes? Yay. And then we're going to go back here because it's actually not complete trash. Uh, Podupine. You know what? No, 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 no. You go here. <laughs> good sigils. That's where you go. By the way, this is actually a good sigil, honestly, because if you put this, for example, on the Dios on the Beaver, you get instantly three items. You play the card, the boom, get three items. And that's extremely powerful. Gaining more than more items is insanely strong. Uh, Podupine. Mm, da, 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 not usual. Uh, not complete trash. It's a one cost one two that also sometimes kills units that have more life than it because it has spikes. So it, it even kills like uh, the pod. It can kill the Wolverine. Like it, it literally kills something that is a one three. And it also kills. No, it doesn't kill two threes, but it kills one threes. Procorin. Trash, but the sigils are decent, so we're gonna go with good sigils. Although I don't like the moving around. But uh, it's it, uh, it has a double strike, okay? It has a double strike, and that alone makes it good sigils. Next, Rat King. Trash. I don't think the, the bone sigils are good, by the way. I don't think the gain four bones is good. I could say needs setup. 
but it doesn't need setup. It, it, it's a really bad card. In my opinion, this should be like a one cost zero one gives you bones. One cost one one gives you bones. Like the two cost is a problem. This is too much for that that much of a bad card. And you almost never want to transfer this on something. You could obviously transfer it onto Beaver on the dice to give you a million bones, but you really need like a bone deck to do that. And I, I don't know, man. It's really a mech card. Rattler, I would say not complete trash. Once again, six cost three one is pretty decent stat wise. So it's not complete trash, but you need to have specific decks for these to work. Like, um, maybe like all the bone co costs should be not need setup, but at that point, like, it, it's like overdoing it. I would say just straight up not, not trash, and, and that's that. It's as simple as that. Raven Egg. Mm, yeah, Raven Egg is definitely at not complete trash. I enjoy the Raven Egg. It's a one cost two, three flyer, pretty much. Could even be up here, but no, could even be up here, but not honestly. Like, these are the, the stars of this game. Raven, I would say trash. Two cost, two, three flyer. Not really something crazy. Ringworm is trash, obviously. You can only use it specifically for the flame. And uh, yeah, there's that. So, so I'm going to do like a reshuffling here at the end. River Otter, I would say trash. Underwater 1-1, one, one, pretty bad unit. If anything, leaves opponents, uh, lets opponents hit you a million times. River Snapper, trash. Two cost, one, six. I mean, honestly, who cares? Doesn't have sigils. Uh, this thing, uh, I would say not complete trash. Because, I mean, it's a four cost, one, two, which is not really insane stats. But it moves around, leaves things behind. You can even sacrifice those one, zero ones that it leaves behind. I'm not sure the things that it leaves behind also get the sigils that it gets. If they do get the sigils that it gets, then it's still decent. But uh, yeah, I mean, it has poisonous. It it might be useful once in a while. It's not really crazy, but it's it's okay. Skink, obviously, at not complete trash. It's not at this level, okay? But it's pretty powerful. Uh, the, the tail left behind gets the flame buffs, which is really good. The tail left behind gets the sigils, which is really good. So in general, Skink is a very... You know what? Actually, Skink is borderline useful territory. Uh, Skunk. Skunk, I would say good sigils. This sigil is better than I thought it is. Like, it isn't a good card, but this sigil is really strong. One damage, one damage less on the opponent cards is, is insanely powerful. Uh, Sparrow, obviously trash because it's a one-cost flyer. Stoat is trash because it's a one-two nothing. Same goes with this. Strange Larva, I would say, useful. Now, you might say, what are you talking about? I think Strange Larva is good. I think it's a one cost. You just win two turns later. Like, um, sometimes it might not happen, but I would say 90% of the times, and if you just play correctly, because you just can draw squirrels from the side deck, throw them wherever the opponent is, and then after two turns, just the Larva evolves and you win. So it's a really useful card. Maybe even easy win, but I wouldn't say, like, it's, it doesn't compare with these gods. Uh, Vulture, I would say, needs setup. Vulture goes to need setup. You cannot get the Vulture if you don't have a bone deck. Like, let's be honest, you, you will not play this thing. At least the Rattler is maybe playable, maybe. Rayuli, needs setup for sure. Uh, Warren, Warren is actually useful. You might not think this, but it's a 1 cost 0 2 that gives you an uh, the rabbit in hand. The, rab this, the rabbit also gets the buffs, the sigils that the Warren has. So if you put anything good at this this thing, if you put the cockroach, this wins you the game. If you put pack rat, it almost wins you the game. If you build if, if you play field mice, this gets like it gets like six or seven mana if you build field mice. If you play this on field mice, uh, this thing Warren is gonna give you a Warren and also uh, a rabbit, which will have field mice on it. Then you play the rabbit, it gives you another rabbit in hand, and then you play the Warren on the other Warren, which just gives you another rabbit in hand. And then you play do rabbit. So this is, if you put like, yeah, it just goes up to four. I don't know why I was calculating everything. So in general, like it, it, it's a good card. Like you have, you can put a bunch of things on it. Like black goat, you get instantly two, three, three triple sacrifices. Um, What else? In general, it's insanely good. Like mealworm, you create, you get a zero two that buffs a unit and then also zero one that buffs a unit. It's really good. Hold, useful. Pelt is, uh, Wolf Cup is definitely up here. Wolf Cup is one of the better ones in my opinion. It's a one cost that evolves into three, two. Like, let, let's be serious here. And uh, the wolf, I would say, is not complete trash because it's a 2 cost 3-2, which is re very well statted. 3 damage in general is pretty decent in this game. And now let's just reward you some things. I would say something like this is the play. Yeah, like Magpie is obviously here because it's it's pretty much everything you want to draw. That's why it's here. Roboros is obviously above these. And Mantis God, I think, is the best card. Not And like in general, obviously, Roboros can become like a 20-20 winning the game. But Mantis God has so many possibilities of what you can do with it. Like, you can flame it. You can put uh, Immortality on it. You can uh, transfer the sigil onto something else. You can put Cuckoo on it. You can put Magpie on it. You can put anything on this thing. And it's just going to become insane. So, in general, this is the order here. 
Here I would say... Should I actually do a rearranging here? Yeah, let's do a rearranging, why not? Wolf Cup is here, this is here. Mantis, I would say, is a bit further down. Warren is also down, Jack is also down. This is definitely down. Wolf Cup, I would say, is a bit higher. Wolf Cup, in general, is something like here. Because you can find it easier. I mean, you're never gonna find these two anyway. Ah, no, Ishrak is definitely better. Like, Ishrak makes all of these into better cards most of the time. Well, the, these two are pretty decent here, though. Maybe this is even better. Tadpole definitely goes a lot down. Uh, Strange Larva, I would say, is uh, here. Like, these two all, these two need specific spots to get played on. I guess good. This is good. Yeah, I think this is decent here. This is the right order. Here, ooh, so many more things to do. You, you go definitely a lot to down. Uh, the reason I... Yeah, let's, let's just continue here. So, Kraken, these are decent cards. Maybe Kraken goes a bit more down because it's a bit random. Skink definitely goes a bit up. Mealworm goes... It's decent here for now. Rabbit. Rabbit definitely goes a lot down because you need a million setups for this to work. You need to have some cards. Not, maybe not really worse than these. You know what? This, this is trash. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this isn't a good card, in my opinion. Let's continue. So, this is decent here. This is a lot worse, obviously. Amoeba is decent. These definitely go to the end. I don't like these cards. This is worse still. This is decent. This is decent-ish. Elkfawn, maybe a bit more down the line. Podupine, maybe a bit more down the line. Maybe somewhere around here. Wolf is definitely above these. So, I would say maybe here. I still enjoy this a bit more. Possum is below the wolf. Elk is below the wolf, in my opinion. Mole Man is definitely a lot lower. Like, uh, still, it, it's just a defensive card. Uh, actually, I would definitely choose the Great Kraken over the Mole Man. Rabbit, maybe not. Raven Egg, Child's Play. Mm, yeah, this also goes a bit further down. And uh, I think um, Amiibo also goes a bit further down. This is this is my personal playlist, right? This is my personal opinions and... Pro no, this is... A f imagine, imagine. No, I, I think, like, this is better. I think this makes sense. Yeah, Skink is better than these all because it has so many synergies and is so good and a bunch of things that it does. I might not be choosing it very often, but the thing is that the card is actually insane. Uh, do I really need to do this? Honestly, I'm, I'm just gonna do it for these and then I'm done because these are just... Like, these need specific decks, it doesn't matter where what is, and these, like, are trash, so who cares what is the best trash and what's the worst trash. So, let's just go with the sigils. Best sigil, obviously, is this. Then we get the double strikes. Then after that, we get the... The fecundity. So what? Sift is putting fecundity below double strikes. Yeah, man. It's not really that crazy good. Let's go with pack rat then. After that, we go with, I would say, skink. This is actually a really good sigil. This stays back because it has the move around, by the way. Mm, now, here on the end one, I would say this goes a lot further down the line. Beehive should be trash, most likely. Nah, uh, the only reason this... Uh, you know what? It's gonna go need setup. It's gonna go need setup. Because this needs to get buffs to be good. That's the reason why it needs setup. Yeah, that's why this category exists. And yeah, good thing I, I did the switcheroo here. Procron still stays last because it has the stupid moves around sigil. And I think uh, this is it pretty much. I do believe that skink is pretty decent. If anything, it could even be here, but I think items are better. And like double strikes and stuff. These are the win sigils. And uh, yeah, I think that is pretty much the tier list. Um, I Why am I saying M? I don't know. Yeah, that's it pretty much. I would like to hear some opinions. Do you agree? Disagree? Did you like it? If you liked it, did you actually like the video itself or did you just like the... <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be it. Thanks for all the Patreon supporters. I hope you guys... I hope this, uh, this tier list is helpful for anybody that cares. Um, for anybody that stayed here for more than the Inscription Cases mod, I guess thanks for being here and watching. Hope you guys like this. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess... That's that's it pretty much. This is literally the tier list. Maybe maybe even you know make these things a bit more uh, organized. But otherwise, this is literally it. I I think this is actually it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, obviously. By the way, before you start disagreeing and whatnot, obviously we don't have the same playstyles. Like I don't know how many of my videos you have seen or not, but I play a very aggressive inscription. I always try to get one shots in most of the fights or have in general three or four insane units in the deck. And uh, the trash units here don't really help with my strategy. That's part of why everything is like it is. And um, yeah, I mean, otherwise, I'm pretty sure like 90% of the people that watch me anyway 
do agree with these, right? I'm pretty sure because if you watch me, like if you have seen like more than five of my videos and are an actual watcher of the series of my inscription runs, then I'm pretty sure you agree with most of the things I say. And uh, now if you're completely new to the channel, then um, yeah, I guess this this whole thing ha is based on how what I'm playing, how I'm playing and what I'm using in general in my runs. Now, once again, as I said, People watching this channel are pretty sure I'm pretty sure they know that I would have placed these three down here in the trash territory But honestly speaking, it's not like I'm using bones that much and I do realize that these cards are decent But the thing is that bone units are not really easy playable and uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it I don't need to continue explaining here I think I can just you know end this video here once again Thanks for the patreon supporters It really helps out and if you want to also help me out as I said drop a like helps out uh, When you're on with the algorithm in the channel and etc 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 And I would really like to hear some opinions of this whole tier list if you agree disagree if you you could also add if you are watching uh, any of my videos you know like yeah sift i am watching you and i do actually disagree or uh, you know i just came from the tier list and i do disagree you know um i i'm okay with everything by the way you can disagree you can agree you, you can just tell me whatever uh the, the only reason i'm pointing out the part where you tell me if you watch the channel or not is so that i get an understanding of how much you know about how i play because it's it's different when somebody watching the channel disagrees uh, because he has knowledge of how I play and how I use the cards and it's different than somebody coming in and saying yeah I do disagree with you I think the elk is insane because it moves around the block stuff I would have put the wolverine higher because I have played this and this and this and that yeah um, obviously I will have a knowledge of okay I guess you don't know exactly how I play so I do understand your position you know that's what I mean. If you don't watch my channel and point it out, then I will know that you don't know how I play. So I can understand where you're coming from, right? Because if you do watch the channel and do know how I play and then disagree, I can also know where you're coming from. You're seeing my plays and you disagree with my plays, you know? It's, it's like a different feeling. It's not like I'm trying to, you know, differentiate of, oh, you don't watch the channel and you're not right. No, no, no. I mean, you don't watch the channel, so you might not understand why I put something where I put it. So I can, you know, answer to you with a different um, tone and also with a more explanatory manner than somebody who is watching the channel and says I disagree with you and then you know I could say yes but if you watch the channel you know that the blood the, the, this is trash I have explained a million times air is trash I have explained a million times river is trash <laughs> anyway um, yeah that's going to be it so um, once again I hope you guys enjoyed I definitely did and uh, yeah oh by the way if you want to join the community there is a discord link in the description and you can join the discord if you want to continue a discussion there maybe a bunch of people are going to join the inscription part of my discord and you know start disagreeing with what is good and what is not and uh, yeah i think that's going to be it hopefully this helped you out and yeah that's it thanks for watching and see you guys around